I want to believe that there's a hive mind of Japanese creators out there who decided that anime romances can only take place in high school. Anime romances outside of this norm is in the minority. For visual novels, it's usually the same thing. Now, personally, I don't mind it too much because there's a lot that can be explored within these coming-of-age stories with troubled adolescents. But I do desire to see more stories featuring adults, as we adults aren't perfect beings once we leave high school. After all, we struggle with those same issues too, and romance is no exception. Making Lovers is a breath of fresh air that explores that idea. It features a group of characters well out of high school and depicts romances within an adult life setting. Full of all too familiar realistic scenarios like searching for apartments, scheduling dates with work schedules, and trying to shoo away stubborn parents asking why you don't have kids yet. And with that, welcome to the August Tale, and today we're going to be taking a look at Making Lovers. So when I first read the premise for Making Lovers, I won't lie, I was expecting a commentary on late blooming love. People could laugh at me all that they want, but I refused to give up on my ideals when it came to love. I had stood unwavering in my beliefs for my entire life, that is, until the words of a certain girl turned my view on love inside out. A premise that could have explored more of the social criticism of adolescent romances, or the inner conflict of scarred relationships in the past. LOL NOPE! Turns out our main character is a giant degenerate that just so happens to have a skewed perspective on romance. His anime addictions aside, after being bugged by his fellow playboy friends to go to mixtures and arrange dates, he gets wrapped up in a string of fortunate slash unfortunate circumstances in which he meets our heroines. So for today's round of pretty and 100% legal girls, we have Big Wife Little Sister Energy, powered by her older brother Particles, Akko Takanashi. That one classmate in college who liked you but never wanted to admit it, Sundari, Karen Kitaoji. Ara Ara Onesan, but innocent in romance affairs, Saki Naruse. The stylish, energetic girl who just won't leave Senpai alone, Reina Kaname. And finally, the strange but cheerful cinnamon roll, Mashiro Tsukino. The common route wastes no time into getting into the routes of the different girls. Choosing certain decisions will lead you to the girl that you want to follow. As for me, I went with Saki, Akko, Karen, Mashiro, and then Reina. One special thing about this visual novel is that you have the option to choose your date locations, and based on the location, you'll get different dialogue. For example, you can elect to go sing karaoke and then go eat at the food court afterwards. Or you can take a stroll on the coastal boardwalk before drinking at a nice bar. Or you can immediately go to the love hotel on your first date and then go to the pub for drinks. And then go back to the love hotel. The date plan that you pick doesn't have story consequences, but picking the right answers will give you something nice to appreciate. Let's just say I left you guys a little present in the description down below. While Saki Narose is older than our main character, she, like our main character, has never been in a romantic relationship before. But for these two late bloomers, it's never too late to begin love. At the beginning of their route, there's that initial awkwardness of trying to navigate their feelings for the first time. This evolves into cute, playful fluff as soon as they get over their troubles and continue dating. There's a lot of playful banter between these two individuals and it feels very natural. Like that feeling when you want to pull an embarrassing prank on your girlfriend, but then she pulls out a reverse Uno card, and then you end up questioning the legitimacy of your relationship. You know, those kind of jokes. As the two continue to grow their relationship, the story creates a wonderful message about searching for independence and living with a purpose. To be brave, to be able to break off any dependencies holding you back. Now we can't have a romance visual novel without the inclusion of a little sister character, so Aku is here to fit the role, and surprisingly, I like this route quite a bit. After we get over the initial, but you're my sister, tomfoolery and nervousness, Akko becomes super clingy, as the two siblings often fool around, playing hide and seek with their family around, if you know what I mean. Honestly, props to her voice actor Hattori Ichi as she gives Akko such a dynamic range to express her jokes. For a majority of the time, it's the cute high-pitched voice, but given the scenarios, some of the voices land the jokes very well. I would say that the route is mostly calm as it shows the two fawn over each other, but still behave regularly as a sibling relationship. It slowly ramps up as the two recognize this fact, and the route finally concludes with a decisive moment, reinforcing the idea of releasing repressed feelings, which sold the route for me in the end. Karen Kitayoji reflects the most realistic state of graduated college students. Being broke, dealing with shitty roommates, trying to find a cheap apartment, and the existential crisis of finding purpose in life. You know, the usual. Karen often gets into childish fights with our main character, making conversations between the two engaging. She's serious and prideful at times, but her self-consciousness and anxiousness reel her personality back in. And it's only after they begin their relationship that Karen becomes less uptight and more relaxed. Like after the second date, Karen becomes even more flirty as she fawns over our main character, and in my opinion, becoming even more adorable.
By the latter half of her route, the story introduces a pressing conflict that Karen has to overcome and the route spends the rest of this time devoted to building up to this moment. In the other routes, a conclusion appears suddenly to wrap up the events and close out the story. However, Karen herself has a small but proper build up to a very wholesome conclusion. Following after her, we have the upfront and eccentric Mashiro, who straight up makes our main character sign a contract to be lovers. Her allure is the strange and odd behaviors that she has. Being weird is an endearing character trait, but if you look past all that, our protagonist finds an honest and cheerful girl. Mashiro has some big brain one-liners though, and the sheer innocence and just how silly they were made me chuckle a little. <laughs> Mashiro is well aware of her unique quirks and it's because of this that she feels insecure at times and it's up to our main protagonist to support and boost her self-confidence. And finally we have Reina, an energetic fashion model dedicated to seducing our main character. Through her antics we see Reina as an extremely talkative, sly, and mischievous girl. She's needy, obsessive, childishly jealous, and a big attention seeker, even as the two get together. All of these traits combined with her high-pitched voice describe her as a big, annoying problem child which can turn readers away. As the story lets us see both sides of Reina, both her personal life and work life, we can see that underneath that exterior is a troubled individual struggling to get through her personal anxiety. And as we wrap up her route, the story pushes for these two characters to obtain the courage to brave through all the troubles and improve for the sake of themselves and each other. Outside of our main cast, it seems as Making Lovers has decided to take another element of real life by having all the supporting characters tease our protagonist. After all, if we ourselves can't find love, the next best thing is to embarrass and roast our friends and relationships as much as possible. Especially if you're the main character's parents. So, so of course, they joke around a lot to great effect, but they are always in favor of supporting our leads lovingly. The art is simple enough for the environment that the characters live in, showing bustling urban places. Most of the time, however, is often spent inside of the couple's houses, showing off the personality of each of the heroines. The simplistic nature of the background goes into great effect when showing out special CGs, serving to highlight the character design of the heroines. Props to the localization writer for the work in Making Lovers. The writing is alright by itself, but the language used is so colorful and elevates the strong expressive nature of the characters. The music is varied enough to cover a wide range of scenarios and the majority of music is focused on upbeat and cheerful tones. It's simple enough to add value to the scene just to be present. And then sometimes certain music tracks just like to go a little bit extra. There's one standout track that I do like in Making Lovers, and I'll use it to close out this video. Making Lovers shows us the journey of these characters as they navigate through the unsure nature of life. All adults have daily conflicts, and adult romances are even more complicated than normal. Topics such as chasing careers, living together, getting married, and raising children are only a couple of the issues that our characters have to confront. These are conflicts that our characters can only have in a relationship together as they seek to support each other and overcome those difficulties. Making Lovers is a high recommendation as the visual novel tackles the everyday adventures of romance within the adult life with a colorful, entertaining cast of characters and a solid production to back it up. Subscribe if you liked the video and want to see more. Check back every week for new content. For more of my thoughts and the most up-to-date news on videos, you can find me on Twitter at The August Tale. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram for announcements as well as extra additional content. Check out some of my other anime visual novel reviews on my channel playlist. Links are in the description down below. If you have read the visual novel though, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Let me know what girls you liked and let me know what your favorite parts of the visual novel were. 